All right, as I'm getting ready for the Christmas rush for cutting board orders, I decided to take the time to do a bit of a DIY or a, or a how-to for end grain cutting boards. Now there's a million of these out there. I'm not gonna be doing anything that's a drastic variation on the theme here. You have to think of a tree like a collection of straws, okay? And the end grain, it would be the top of those straws. So when you're putting your knife down, it kind of cuts through the grains a little bit. The end grain of a board is gonna be this part, all right? That part there is a lot softer on your knife. So if you have nice knives, if you are a chef, if you are uh, good with knives and good in the kitchen, you're gonna want one of those. So, uh, I got an order for one of these. It's gonna be 12 inches by 16 inches. So it's a larger version of it. I'll go through my process, whether or not to plain end grain, which you can, you just have to be careful. And uh, more importantly, how to cut, how to measure, and how to do all that stuff. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for coming, Mambo Woodworks. <laughs>first step with any cutting board is cutting down the board go to 27 inches and then I take multiple passes through this maple because it will sometimes bind the blade it's thick and not easy to cut so then I come over to my joiner and just get one edge here I like this joiner for edges specifically it's tough to get the face done because it's not a lot of capacity but it's a good good machine I like it I cut these ones down to an inch and a quarter mainly so that I could have uh, an even square that was the, the total width of the board itself was about an inch and a quarter, so that's what I, I did here. And then finally, um, I don't know, I think I cut, ended up cutting 10, maybe 12 strips. Came over to my clamps. The issue with these clamps is that I don't clean them well enough, so I have to come back with a chisel and then often with my sander just to get a super clean edge for my first glue up, which looks a lot like every other standard cutting board or plank glue up, just making sure I'm getting... Uh, one of those two sides really, really covered and saturated with the glue, and then I clamp it together. No big deal here. Did put a little more on there, but you've got to make sure you come back and you clean it off. This stuff is waterproof, this Type on 3, so you can totally spray it and then clean it off with rags. Came back with a chisel just to get a couple of those little raised nubs. Then it was off to the table saw to get it cut down to size for the planer. Just have to get under 12 and a half inches there to make sure it's under the capacity with a little bit of room. Uh, the planer is where I get my first reference edge for the next glue up. Get to use my flip top tool cart here. I got this design from Spence Lee Design Co. Uh, really easy to follow along and he's great so follow if you have a chance. So I set this thing up. Um, probably ended up running it through maybe six or eight times um, just to make sure it was super flat and then brought it over to my crosscut sled to determine the thickness of the cutting board. So this is that preparation for the second glue up you've got to do. You can see I've got a stop in there. That stop itself is at an inch and a quarter as well. That way I just knew I had like a big thick butcher block at the end of this. So I ended up cutting what was going to end up being about 16 and a half inches of total length. And then I like to alternate each of these strips so I can get a little bit of a, of a variation on the face of the actual cutting board. One more tip I've picked up over the years here is uh, trying to get rid of this just little bit of tear out you'll see. So I don't do, because it might mess up the glue or give you those little gaps. So what I'll do is honestly just one swipe on each corner with 220 grit sandpaper. And all I'm doing is just making sure that I'm getting all those little burrs out of the way so I don't have any issue with the glue adhering, no spaces, no vacancies. And then once, and you'll see this in a second, once I get rid of the burrs on those insides and I put these together, these two in particular, but you can't see any air in the middle of that joint, right? So that's what I'm looking for is that really tight joint. If I have the tear out there at any point, you can see it'll create a little bit of a vacancy, a little space there. And that's why you want to just make sure you're taking those burrs off of the inside edge and inside corner, I should say, of every single little piece before you do the glue up. So here we go with that. I always take the time to get every single one of those corners. It does make a difference, especially when I'm getting ready for this next big glue up where I use a ton of glue, as you'll soon see. So I really kind of just coat it on, scrape it on, and then uh, get this thing ready. I always make sure to use some calls when I'm trying to tighten this up, and then you've got to clean up every single little excess piece of glue. Okay, the next part of the process is making a nice flat surface, both on the top and on the bottom. Now, there's a couple ways to do that, and for a long time I was afraid of using a planer. We'll go over that in a second. But you can use a belt sander. It takes a while, or, or, or a regular sander. It just takes a while, and, uh, and it really burns through sandpaper. Remember that straw analogy when you've got all the straws coming up in that vertical orientation, which is what this is, the top of the tree, um, it really burns through sandpaper quickly and takes forever. So the planing is just a way to kind of speed that process up. Now, you don't want to rush the 
planning. You go very small passes. And the secret with that uh, is to actually put about a, a little, little chamfer, 45 degree chamfer on the outside edges of the entire cutting board. And then when I put it through the planer, just that light, that little bit of variation in the height, uh, or I guess the, the, where the top is on this thing, you'll see won't cause the, the wood to kind of tear out or explode as some people suggest it might. Um, I've never had the explosion, but I'm always pretty careful when I do this. So that'll be the next step. I usually use my palm router for this chamfer. I don't like to use my routing table because as you can see, those strips are a little wobbly and I don't want that to be moving around on the table itself. So palm router is fine. Then I bring it over to the planer and use a lot of very light passes. You can see that I'm moving that wheel over there maybe a tenth of a rotation every time. I do one entire face and then flip it over and do the other one. Just take super, super light passes every time you do it. As you can see, a lot of light passes, a lot of light passes, and uh, and that and that that little bevel on the edge. Now I didn't even I didn't even get all the way down to the bevel edge. I don't know if you. But can see. Uh, certainly I could have gone the rest of that. That looks like maybe an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch or so. And uh, and that, but I know that my edge profile is going to take care of that, so I'm not too worried about it. So the next step, but yeah, this is this is a nice flat surface. I don't have to worry about any uh, raised or lowered parts, any peaks or valleys, and you can see that really cool grain pattern coming out as well. So. Um, Try to crisscross it as much as possible. All right, next up, I'm gonna clean up these edges and then uh, it's time for some edge profiling and sanding. I brought it over to the crosscut sled to do a little five cut method for the perfect square. If you're unfamiliar with that, you should become familiar with it. It makes everything a lot easier. So I went ahead and treated those four sides and then brought it over to the table saw to cut it down to its final dimension, which is 12 by 16 inches. After that, it was time to do the edge profile. This is the reason why you should use sharp bits you'll see in a second that I really burned that edge and it sucks you can see those burn marks there so I had to come back and sand all that down but use the chamfer there that's what the underside looks like so you can see what I'm talking about with that little bit of reveal and then I went through a standard sanding increase so I think I started at uh, 120 150 180 220 uh, make sure I go up and down then a diagonal and then across the grain you really have to take your time with this spraying water between each grit so that you know you're gonna have a nice smooth surface at the end of it so finishing cutting boards is a very easy process. You don't need to go through coats and coats and coats and sanding and coats and coats. You're just, the best way to do that is just with mineral oil, straight 100% mineral oil. So I'll do a really kind of heavy bath of that mineral oil stuff and I'll actually pour it in here. You'll see you really, really get a good soak on it. And you go ahead and you let it dry out for end grain ones, okay, for these end grain ones. And remember, these are the vertical part of those straws. They soak up a ton of the mineral oil. So I probably have to do that same bath two times fully, let it dry completely. Once it's dried, I'll go back over it with like a, a, a beeswax mineral oil wax that I made, and that usually will do the trick to really seal it well. That way I can just package it and send it off. All right, so this is the first time you really get to see the, uh, the grain pattern appear. It's actually a pretty satisfying process, so insert cool music now. Piccoli passi che faccio con te Segui il tuo cuore Now even as you watch this you'll see I'll try not to speed it up but you can watch it The grains will soak that up. Yeah, you can see it right there The grain soaks up the mineral oil really really quickly you can see that, right? Really soaks up a lot of this mineral oil and it's just getting drawn into those vertical straws as we discussed. Okay, so I let this dry for 36 hours and it is really well soaked in. So uh, I'm actually also glad to see that the grain patterns do look as good as I'd hoped. Um, so the next part of this is I'm going to apply some of my Mambo Woodworks wax to it. This is just standard mineral oil that you but mix in with heated up beeswax, uh, about a one to one ratio, and you get a very cool wax that you can use to both coat and then also seal the board. So, liberal amount, and then start to wipe it in, spread it evenly. Now, I don't need to go crazy because I've already put a lot of mineral oil, as you saw, on the original beginning of this, the original pour of the finishing process. So, 
I give this wax out with every one of the boards that I sell now, so uh, there's that, and then it is for sale on the website if you'd like some. It's All right, so top of it's done. Same thing to the bottom. I finish the top and bottom the same. Uh, I'm gonna let this finish for, uh, I don't know, probably about 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, and then I'll come back and wipe off the excess. So really trying to cover this thing liberally. Oh, my shop assistant has joined us. Yeah, my awesome dog Stella decided to come in and take a peek at the final product. She liked it. It was good. There will be meat prepared on there, so she's pretty fired up about that. Yeah, and then I came back, put in the feet. Um, these are just a simple rubber feet I get on Amazon in bulk. Tighten those down, and then this thing is uh, done. So ready to use. I really like how this turned out. It's a nice one. Color looks great. Grain pattern's awesome. Very pleased with this. Stop on by if you want to get one of these at mambawoodworks.com. Thanks for coming. Mambo Woodworks.